Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Highland. A special welcome to everyone who's joining in for this video service, but a particular welcome to those who are from Belmont Uniting Church who are sharing with us this week as they did last week as the Reverend Ikani Vaitoi is on leave. In relation to the St. Luke's folk, I'd just like to let you know that um, the church office is now open again on Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 o'clock for two hours. And uh, what we're suggesting is that uh, people might like to avail themselves of the opportunity not just to come in and drop by, and obviously numbers in relation to this are limited, but you might like to come and use the prayer space here in the church to come and spend some time in quiet and prayer, perhaps to light a candle. This week our focus is on a very well-known passage from Matthew's Gospel, words of Jesus, words that are sometimes referred to as the great invitation. Jesus says to us, come to me all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. These are words that are clearly words for our time and we'll focus on them a little later. Christ invites us to let go of our burdens, to receive the rest he offers, which is so much more than a break from work or the other tiring dimensions of life. So let's respond to that invitation by coming to God in prayer. Let's take some time to slow down, to place before God the burdens that we are carrying, to be open to hear a word from God because prayer is, is, a, is a relational thing, it's two-way, and to also spend some time giving praise to God for God's goodness to us. Let's pray. Triune God, Holy Three, Holy One, to you do we bring our offering of praise and thanksgiving. In the times of weakness and the hour of need, you provide the strength by which we can carry on, the shoulder upon which we can rest our head. When our load is heavy and too much to bear, even though the events of life may conspire to suggest otherwise, you are right there with us, sharing the load, providing the grace that we can depend on. In times of weakness and the hour of need, we remember that the words of Jesus are words for us. Come and I will give you rest. For yours is the way of grace divine, wholeness, real healing, true peace, shalom. Forgive us when we take you for granted or forget your presence and love. Forgive us when we choose paths other than the way of Christ. Forgive us when we place our trust and hope in those things that wither and do not last. Forgive us when we fall for the spirits of this age who would have us live in a way which ignores our vulnerabilities, our needs, our limitations, our mortality. Enable us to be open to your transforming spirit. Open us again to your life and peace. Assure us that through Christ there is forgiveness, that new beginnings are possible. And we pray in his name and for his sake. Amen. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. 
Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Recently, I have heard quite a few people speaking wistfully about what they can recall of their thoughts in January about what lay ahead for them in 2020. I say what they can recall of their plans and thoughts for the year ahead because these last months have changed everything so much, haven't they? We well and truly now know that the world is not going to suddenly return anytime soon to what it was like on January the 1st, 2020. Who knows when we'll be able to wander around without thinking about the risk of doing something that might lead us to uh, being put at risk of infection or putting someone else at risk of infection. Who knows when we'll be able to easily travel around this state or freely travel interstate, let alone travel internationally. Everything is different. People are understandably feeling tired and worn down frustrated, angry. People are grieving for what is now lost. The emergence of COVID-19 has come like an existential shock to the whole population of our planet. This tiny virus has bluntly reminded us of our fragility and our mortality as humans. COVID-19 makes clear that it is pure arrogance and indeed an illusion to claim that we humans are in control, that we are at the centre of things and we have it all sorted out. Let's turn to the text that we just heard from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Can I encourage you to read the whole of the chapter that this text comes from, chapter 11 of Matthew's Gospel? As you do, you will quickly realise that at this point in his ministry, Jesus is exasperated by the way people have failed to respond to him and also to the message of his cousin, John the Baptist. They're simply not being heard. Their ministries have been, by many, rejected or ignored. Indeed, people are engaging in that age-old game of character assassination. Jesus says that John the Baptist has been written off as having a demon because of his ascetic lifestyle and his confronting language. And Jesus says that as far as he himself goes, people say that he is not worth listening to because he is no more than a glutton and a drunkard who dares to eat with tax collectors and prostitutes. Which prompts me to ask, who are the people today who are speaking truth but who are not being heard, or, or worse, who are being written off? And dare I ask, as we travel through these scary times of COVID-19 and try to make sense of it all, who are we listening to? Hopefully we're paying attention to the medical experts and the appropriate authorities who are trying as best they can, at least in our country, to keep us safe. But are there messages of love and hope that we are missing? What small miracles of compassion and care which speak of the way of God are not getting onto our radar screens? because no space seems to be given in the media for such considerations and certainly no space for considering ultimate questions. And then what about Jesus? As we just noted, many in his time had written him off and considered him not worth listening to, and he doesn't get a mention in the press. But does he have a word to us in this crisis we're in? Well, I am of course going to say that he has much to say that addresses our situation. And I'm going to focus in doing that on some words of Jesus that were in that text. Just, just simply one line, a line that's been called the Great Invitation. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, come to me. Jesus invites us to come to him, not to those who pile up the burdens who add to, the, to our worries. No, he invites us to come because Jesus is genuinely there for us. To come to him 
because he's there for you and me. He's not running some other agenda. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. In other words, we don't have to come to Jesus when we have it all sorted out, when we have got our religion right, our faith right, when we're in great shape. No, Jesus invites us to come as we are right now, with all our baggage, all our fears and anxieties, all our limitations and sins, all that ails us. He invites us to come and bring our burdens to him. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. According to one commentator, the Greek word that is translated rest in this text is anapausis, anapausis. And this word apparently evokes the experience of weary travelers finding an oasis in the desert. And remember too, that according to the book of Genesis, God rested on the seventh day and thus initiated the notion of the Sabbath. Sabbath a time not simply to spend time not doing things, but to actually rest and engage in communion with God. Jesus promises, if we come to him and lay our burdens before him, that he will give us rest. Jesus, in other words, promises that the burdens and travails of life do not have the last word. I will give you rest, he says. Jesus promises that death and disease do not have the last word. I will give you rest, Jesus says. In other words, in Jesus, there is hope. For those of us who follow Jesus, who listen to him, we believe there is a word in him of divine hope that his life, death and resurrection not only declare a word of hope for the world and indeed all creation, but makes that hope real, proves that God's love is more powerful than anything else in all creation, even COVID-19. Through Jesus, the rest that we are offered is the good news that God is for us. Jesus promises hope and genuine rest. Jesus promises that to you and to me, even in the days of COVID-19. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Surely that is a word for our time. Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down.
this is our only refuge. Take it to the Lord in We move now to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others. And our, the prayer that we're using is based on a prayer from the United Methodist Church in the USA and written by Jamie D. Greening. It's a prayer which invites you and me to offer our, our own prayers. So it's an invitational prayer. Uh, and I invite you in the spaces that I'll provide to offer your own prayers. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord for the privilege of prayer. Let us lift up our prayers to God. And I invite you to lift up your prayers for those who are burdened by ill health, by COVID-19, cancer, Alzheimer's, depression, by the struggles of life. I invite you to lift up your prayers for those who are afflicted with poverty, war, injustice, and the pain of loss. I invite you to lift up your prayers for those who labor to tell the gospel in all the world. I invite you to lift up your prayers for those who carry the burden of leadership in government, in medicine, in education, and in the church. I invite you to lift up your prayers for the women, men, and children that are known to you, that are special to you. I invite you to lift up prayers for them, prayers of thanksgiving and perhaps prayers related to burdens and needs that they carry. I invite you to lift up your prayers for the world, your prayers of hope for the world and for yourselves. And we offer all these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who hears our prayers and responds, and who invited us to place our burdens with him. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, go into this week knowing that Christ is with you, that whatever you face, you are not alone. And may you know the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.